it's just it's final. final. Yeah, final. Don't worry about it. So, why do they come? Maybe it's the cuisine. Plenty of beer, plenty of food, and you can bet as much as you like. <laughs> Maybe it's the scintillating company. Oh, what? No. I think we should um, shoot all the Americans and suck their brains out with a straw. Can you say something mildly intelligent? All right. Huh. Or maybe they're here. Suddenly, by the end of it all, everybody is having a merry old time. Or if they're not, they plan to. I don't think it's our day somehow. You have to have fun elsewhere. Yes. What have we got in mind? <laughs> oh, we won't tell you that. It's early days, yes. Yeah. Early yeah, hours, yes. Yeah. We've still got plenty of time. I'll be back bigger and better than ever with sponsors. I've won a bit of money. Everybody's winning. Everybody's having a good time. You can see that by the crowd. Thank you. <laughs> bit of culture from up north. Paul Ransley reporting from Mingala in North Queensland, which is a couple of hours away from somewhere else up there. More in a moment. So welcome back to Warrnambool on Cup Day 1987 and a big warm welcome to Work Australia. Two men very familiar to Channel 10 viewers will be Phil Gibbs and Graham Kelly who have joined us in the mounting yard to discuss the form for the Dulux Warrnambool Cup. Phil, welcome back to the microphone. Thank you very much Shane and it's great to meet up with you. Uh, this will be your first Warrnambool on uh, television and uh, what I gathered earlier when we were talking through BTV and your uh, related stations there, uh, you're keeping them very, very well informed. Thank you, Phil. Well, let's go to the form now. Graham Kelly's just joined us. And, Graham, if we can have a look at number one, I'm a Redmond, to be ridden by D. Gauchi. Well, he's the favourite in the race, Shane. Uh, inclined to ease out in betting because uh, bookmakers think that it'll be a hard task for him with 57. His form's quite good. One at Mooney Valley, and his last start didn't have any luck when six in the metric mile at Flemington. I'm expecting I'm a red man to run very well. To number two now, Phil, alternate. Yes, alternate. Um, Shane is always a chance. A, a very honest horse. Ran third at its last start, and I expect it to run well. Number three, affected, is a scratching. Number four, top banner to be ridden by Harry White. Well, he's the one that the big money's for in the ring, uh, Shane. He's uh, one of his last two starts at Mooney Valley, and of course here on Tuesday when he scored a magnificent win. He's very firm in betting and will be certainly hard to beat with Harry White aboard. Number five is all spades. I know Philip Alderman is very keen about his mount, Phil. Yes, and uh, I'm keen about uh, all spades. Used to be owned by Sir Donald Triscothic. It's a top chance. The form is right. It's run two seconds its last two starts. A win uh, before that. Had the run of the race uh, last start and will show up well. The first of three New Zealanders in the field is number six, on Chanteur, to be ridden by Wayne Trelaw. Uh, he won the VRC St. Ledger last year, but he's been struggling to regain form since. Only second, uh, tenth of 11 in the Easter Cup would have to improve a lot, but the conditions will suit him today. Phil, you know the jockey of number seven, Hollinger, Gary Willits, reasonably well. Any inside information? No, not really. Uh, Gary has ridden a uh, uh, horse for me on occasions, but uh, he'll ride it very, very well, Hollinger. It's coming back in form, runs on well. And uh, I don't know, I think I'd prefer others. Speaking of others, Graham, number eight, Maglaga Don, has it got any show in this field? Uh, no, I don't think so, Shane. And one thing to notice that Maglaga Don is a very big horse and, and you'll probably find he's slowly away today and that'll make it very hard for him. Moving on now to number nine, Skipton Town. Well, it's shown a little bit of form, but we'll have to improve on its last start. The, uh, the distance, I think, will test it in this company. Number 10, Dextrous, was a late scratching earlier this morning, so we'll move on now to number 11, Game Trees, to be ridden by Spike Short. 
uh, reasonable second of pure shake at Mooney Valley at his last start, but stepping up in class here, and game trees will find it hard. To number 12, Fiery Winella. Well, Fiery Winella uh, hasn't won beyond 2,000 metres, but near top form and could go reasonably well. To 13, Graham, here's the Duke. Uh, his form hasn't been up to this uh, of late, Shane. I think he's got a very tough job ahead. And number 14, another New Zealander, by Sir Tristram, Royal Breed. Yeah, oh, this big race looks beyond it in my book. To the other New Zealander, number 15, Gay Saland, Graham. Well, this is one with an outside chance. Anyone looking for a rough each-way bet, I'd suggest Gay A good second to see Boy down at Mornington, his last start. And Gay Saland comes in at a uh, better chance than his odds would suggest. And will I get shouted down if I say Solid Talk could be looking for something easier, Phil? Yes, it's stepping up in class uh, for this big race and uh, distance against him as well. Graham, you've been in the betting ring. What's the indications it's from there? Well, it seems uh, pretty certain, Shane, that I'm a red man. We'll start favourite in the cup. But the uh, good money, as I said earlier, has been for Top Banner. He's firmed into under each way, quote. Uh, all the eight is solid in the market, and so too is All Spades. And another one there's money for is Colin Jones. What would All Spades be about? Uh, he'd be just over each way odds, Phil. Well, Philip Alderman they gave us that tip a short time ago. I think I might have to duck out and get one before he's a bright fellow. <laughs> Having a look at the temperature there, expected top in Warrnambool of 18 degrees, currently 15, a track dead. Phil, a magnificent day here so far. Absolutely glorious day, and for the benefit of our audience back in Melbourne, and those who have been coming down here for years and able to make it this time, uh, there you can see the magnificent shot of the course and the surrounds of Warrnambool taken uh, from the BTV6 helicopter, and the crowds here, uh, well up to standard and as I said earlier some people are telling me that it could be a record Graham you heard that didn't you yes yes and I was talking to Ian Middleton the secretary a few minutes ago he said he can't tell until the, of course the gate receipts come in but also until the grand annuals run okay gentlemen we'll take this commercial break and come back with your selections for the Warrnambool Cup 1987 minutes draw nearer to the running of the 1987 Warrnambool Cup and Phil we'll just have a look now at some of the favoured ones on the tote and I see I'm a red man as 145 and 80. Well as Graham indicated from the betting ring that is the favourite and should run very well uh, but the other two um, we have alternate and uh, Top Banner looking uh, well in the betting there. And also the other one is Hollinger with number 11 in the field. Game Trees given some chance. Graham Kelly's just with us. He said there's been a lot of money for Top Banner. Graham, your selection in the race. Well, I've gone for Top Banner. I think you'll find Harry White will rate him very well in front, and I think he's the hardest to beat, but I'm a red man next. And Phil Gibbs, your choice? Well, I'm uh, irrespective whether Philip Alderman said it or not. <laughs> I'm going for all spades because the form is good. It's been thereabouts, and it's due for a win. Yes, I like all spades too. Philip Alderman is just a bit over each way in the ring, and that is very good odds for the large crowd here on course as they put their final few bets on. We'll cross up now to Bruce McAvaney, and Bruce, have you a choice in the cup? Shane, uh, I like alternate. I think he'll run a very good race. Strong and fit. His form is excellent. He's run in the Easter Cup, was very good. He beat, uh, affected at uh, Kyneton in the Wood End Cup. And at Mornington, he ran third behind Royal Scepter. And when you look back, the fact that Royal Scepter had 51 that day and affected uh, alternate had about 56, it was a pretty good run. But it's a very even race with five good chances. Top banner's obviously a hope. Just depends on the 2200 with him. There's also a distance query with all spades. I think there's some distance query with I'm a red man. On Chanteur's out of form, he ran around in the Melbourne Cup and finished 14th. He's a Jules St. Ledger winner. So this time last year, he was at his best. Now, alternate's gone in. Tremendous crowd, as we've already told you. Absolutely perfect day. Could not have ordered it any better. Solid talk about to come up. He looks outclassed. Skipton Town, who's a track specialist behind the line, but he couldn't win on Tuesday's run or his form before that. I'm a red man about to come up. Darren Gauchy. George Hanlon won the race with Mintmaster last year. Harry White, he's won at least three of them. Spotted twice and... Uh, Nicholas John, Malaga Don comes up, he was uh, disappointing in that late. Ninth in the Strath Alban Cup when favourite, up comes Skipton Town, Hollinger second twice in this race. And Skipton Town was also second, a gun for fun, in 85. Oh, rather to Nicholas John, Hollinger second, a gun for fun, and also Mint Master. Fiery Winella comes up, she likes a heavy track and not racing as well. Here's a Duke totally out of form. Royal Breed goes in. 
Enchanteur, who's a very strong stayer, but uh, probably too slow for these. Giseland comes up, maybe a mad chance, and then the famous colours of Lloyd Williams with all spades, who's really found some form. Second in the Kilmore Cup, second in the Wagga Cup, and in between those, the Easter Cup. They're set for the 1987 Warrnambool Cup. Wait for the light. Light about to go on. Starter looks at them all, spades the outside, alternate the rail. Let's hope it's a truly run race. Top banners, very toey. Light on. Set. Racing. Top banner jumped all right. All spades away well near the outside. I'm a red man, probably first out. And Skipton Town showing good speed early. Alternate began all right with Royal Breed. On Chanteur, Fiery Wanella. Hollinger's midfield with solid talk. Malagadon, here's the Duke game. Trees and Giza land. They leave us as they're about to run out of the straight with about 1,900 to go. And all spades out wide with On Chanteur, Royal Breed. Uh, on the inside of it, Skipton Town. I'm a red man. Well, White's got top banner back on the field today. Alternate's about fifth the rail from Malagadon, no pace on Royal Breed around the outside, Game Tree, solid talk. Then Fiery Winella, Hollinger's back third last, here's the Duke and Giza Land. They're going slowly at the 1600, and on the inside, all spades, he's finally got the fence, and Skipton Town pulls his way to the front. A length to Royal Breed, one to on Chanteur, and alternates got the run of the race. A length and a half, I'm a red man on the outside of Malagadon, a big surprise, top banner back through the field with Fiery Winella, solid talk. One and a half to Game Trees, Hollinger on its outside from Giza Land, and then here's the Duke. 1,300 out in the cup, and now White takes off on top banner, and this is where he hit the front on Tuesday. Leads two links to Skipton Town. One away all spades with a nice run with Royal Breed. On Chanteurs, nice and handy, a length to Fiery Winella. Alternate on the inside, seventh from I'm a Red Man, Giza Land the outside on the fence, Malagadon from Hollinger well back. Here's the Duke's third last solid talk and game, Trees. About 12 links cover them as they go up towards the 800, and top banner led a length to Skipton and town. One away then to all spades on the inside of Enchanteur and Royal Breed, a length then to Fiery Winella. I'm a red man, alternate the fence being scrubbed up, a length to Giza Land Malagadon. Game Trees hooking out with a bit of a run further back, here's the Duke Hollinger's back, second last and solid talk. Top banner will White's rated it well, led three quarters, going well at the 400 in second placing Skipton Town from all spades. Uh, now I'm a red man's gone down to the rail and alternates well back into the straight. Top banner led a length and a half, Skipton town and he kicked away. Then all spades I'm a red man comes to the outside from alternate. Top banner Harry Hands and Hills led a length and a half. In second placing all spades Skipton Town and I'm a red man. Top banner's a length in front of all spades and Skipton Town. It's Harry's fourth Waterball Cup. Top banner's won it. Could go second. All spades has got second from Skipton Town. I'm a red man alternate. Behind them Malagadon, Giza Land then came Hollinger. Fiery Winella on Chanteur. Here's the Duke's uh, further back solid talk. Second last game, Trees and Royal Breed. Well, a superb ride by Harry White. Absolutely spot on. See top banner Harry's hands and heels. And he's got the cup one. All spades is under the whip. Skipton Town's battling on. And one, two, three in the run has finished one, two, three in the cup. They just couldn't make up any ground behind the leaders. It was a slowly run race. White had nursed top banner in the early stages, had whipped him around to the front in the middle stages and pinched a break on the turn and is able to win by about a length to all spades who battled on well and third Skipton Town it's a photo for second and third all spades will get it just in front of Skipton Town in fourth placing I'm a red man and from memory alternate getting home pretty well for fifth top banner Tuesday he went out with an enormous lead in the Fosters bronze knight almost got him I think that just tells us how good bronze knight is he chased him all the way and top banner will be about 3, 10 and 1, 15. Unofficially, 3, 10 and 1, 15. And the second horse, all spades, about a dollar. That's what they were showing before the jump. Ninth last year, top banner. Jim Serkey, something like 76 or 77 years of age. And this horse, who seemed to have lost all form until he went to Hamilton and ran second to Triple Lark, then went to Mooney Valley and beat Affected. <laughs> and then, of course, came up here. Harry didn't ride him on uh, Tuesday. They decided to claim with John Didham. But uh, White back today. And he's won at least four Warrnambool Cups. He won back in 64 and 65 with Spotted. And in 85 with Nicholas John. Really was a superb ride.
All spades, a good run second off a bad barrier. Alderman did well to get to the fence out of the straight. He's trapped four or five wide, leaving the straight. And he battled on well, and Skipton Town was a very good run third. I'm a red man, was midfield throughout. Uh, I think Gauchi wisely went to the fence before the turn. He'd obviously worked out that was the place to be. He hooked him out in the straight at about the furlong and a bit, and he made a little dash, but the 57 told. And alternate, well, he was the rail all the way, but in a slowly run race, it wasn't suited for him. And Dim was hard at him on the turn, and whilst he did make up ground in the straight, he never looked like figuring in the placings. Now, all spades get second, and Skipton Town will get third. The winner top banner by ruling from Sovereign Gene. He's won a stall cup, a cast Cup, a Coleraine Cup, but better than all of those, he's now won the Warrnambool Cup. He's a top-class two-year-old, came to Melbourne and started favourite in a race down the straight of Flemington during one of the carnivals. Lost all form, but now he's back to his very best. Four Melbourne Cups for H, and he's equaled that feat in the Warrnambool Cup today. All spades, an excellent second. You must think of him for a moment. Second at Kilmer in the Cup. Second at Caulfield in the Easter Cup. Second at Wagga in the Cup. And second at Warrnambool. Lloyd Williams, who's a part owner who bought into the horse, must be feeling that uh, his luck is due to change. And Skipton Town, the local favourite, who uh, always runs well at this track, has battled on nicely. I'm a red man. And then alternate. Not a lot to be said for the beaten division. Hollinger was never a possibility. He got a mile back. Game Trees made a bit of a dash at about the 800. But uh, Fari Winella was wide on the turn, but not really a chance. So that's it in the Warrnambool Cup. The winners can mark. Now three quarters of a length by a half head. 218.1, so it's two seconds outside the record. As I said, very slow early, but uh, White dashed him away, top banner, and they've run the last half of that race quite quickly. Jockey of Morse weighing out for the next, the Grand Annual. Harry says, it's time for me to step up. Should be a good interview with Graham Kelly. Graham's done that a few times. OK, let's go down and join Shane Brennan after the exciting 87 Warrnambool Cup. A magnificent ride there by Harry White and a good call by Bruce McAvaney. We'll take this commercial break and come back with Toad Dividends on the 1987 Warrnambool Cup. against alternate isn't it well we've just had a minor protest uh, down here it won't affect the um, result of first second and third uh, but fifth alternate has protested against uh, fourth I'm a red man that's the way uh, we just heard it let's have a look at the totes now for the Warrnambool Cup the winner and a great win to uh, rider and uh, jockey Harry White top banner Paid $2.95 for the win and $1.05 for the place. Second was number five, All Spades, $1.05. And third was number nine, Skipton Town, $6.85. And there's the winner being paraded uh, prior to the presentation here of the Warrnambool Cup. But let's play Harry White, uh, top banner, the winner, $2.95 and $1.05. All Spades second, $1.05. And third, Skipton Town, $6.85. Graham Kelly is out in the mounting yard now with Harry White. And listen to what Harry White has to say about that win and that ride. Harry, congratulations. Rival jockey Gary Willits described your ride on top banner as the best he's ever seen. I think everyone who was here at the course and saw it on television would agree. You're in trouble going out of the straight the first time, but you got the top banner clear and uh, made the running from the last 1,200 metres. Was it hard early on? Well, it was hard, uh, Graham. yes. There was a lot of pressure on, as you could see, in the early part of the race because most of the other opposition riders thought that I would go out and run a very fast pace. My plan, my mind, was to uh, give him the easiest run possible for the first five furlongs of this race so, so that he could run the, the journey right out. And it really it fell in right into my hands because, I was, as you can see, I was running back, running about sixth, and uh, when I got round the back there, I said, OK, we've had a rest here long enough, now we can make our own speed, and that's when he took off and went to the front. And then I, I virtually had the race once a half mile. I was going to ask you that, watching on, you didn't ever have that much to spare on uh, Top Benning. He was only sort of a length to a little more than you know, the length in front all yeah, the way. I know the margin wasn't great, but he was running well in front and free and strongly, you know. It was no, it never really... Oh, once they didn't get me uh, at the bottom of the straight, I reckon he was home. Well, congratulations, Harry. You're fourth Thanks winner in the Warnham Cup and probably never a better ride. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Right, Graham, and we'll be back for the uh, presentation of the Cup right after this break. Well, back 
down here at sunny Warrnambool on uh, Warrnambool Grand Annual Day. We're ready for the presentation of the Cup and we take you over to BTV6 host in Shane Brennan. Thank you, Phil. And ladies and gentlemen, I think you've just witnessed a truly magnificent Warrnambool Cup. A great, a great ride, ride by, by the, the master, master Harry, Harry White, White, and indeed, indeed a, great a great training feat by Jim Serkey. It is with pleasure now. It is with it is with pleasure now I introduce the president of the Warrnambool Racing Club, Mr. Alec Calvert. Thank you, Shane. Ladies and gentlemen, firstly, may I welcome our guests to Warrnambool. It's wonderful to see so many people from so many different parts of Australia here today. To our members and our race day patrons, we thank you very much for your support. To our supporters that support us through the TAB, we thank you. To our sponsors, both major and minor sponsors that help us throughout the year. Without you, we couldn't give away the amount of prize money that we do. To the press, thank you all for your coverage, both leading up to the meeting and the stories you do about our May meeting. To the radio stations, thank you all for your publicity, especially Radio 3YB Warnable and 3DB. To the television stations, especially Channel 6, BTV6 Ballarat, who support us all the year, and also Channel 10 Melbourne, who enable us to get our two major races into the city area. And also the other television networks that enable our telecast to go to southern New South Wales and South Australia. To our race course staff, our ranger Tom Blaney and his staff, I don't think you'd find too many other tracks that could stand 28 races in three days. I think the track has stood up magnificently. Congratulations to them. And lastly, to our office staff, Ian Middleton, our secretary, Edna Hose, his assistant. Without them, I don't think we'd have a warnable. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Mr. Doug Kerr Lewis, the managing director of Dulux Australia. We are delighted that Dulux have been with us for a number of years now, and we hope that this association will continue. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Doug Kerr Lewis. Mr Chairman, members of the committee of the Warrnambool Racing Club uh, and Dulux customers everywhere. It's been a great privilege for Dulux to be associated with the running of the Dulux Warrnambool Cup over the last 12 years in conjunction with Hammonds. Uh, I'd like to congratulate the connections of the winning horse today, Top Banner, and with that call upon Mr George Elliott representing the owners to step forward and re receive the trophy uh, for the winning uh, horse. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr President, uh, the Warrnambool Racing Club, ladies and gentlemen, uh, <coughs> we've had a wonderful week here this week. Uh, winning on the Tuesday and again today. And we've had a, a lot of thrills here at Warrnambool in the past, but none bigger than this. I'd firstly like to thank uh, our trainer, Jim, who is a wonderful trainer. And uh, we've had a lot of fun with him through the years. And also to Harry, who, uh, what can you say about Harry? He's a wonderful rider. And also the sponsors for Dulux for this uh, these lovely trophies. Thank you very much. Oh, and the staff at the stables. I mustn't forget them. Thank you very much. I guess horse racing is all about teamwork 
And I'd now like to call upon Jim Serkey uh, to step forward and receive his trophy as the winning trainer. Well, Doug, we'll firstly talk about Jill Lux. You know, I'm a very hungry type of a trainer and I'm surely in need of some more Jill Lux paint for my old truck. <laughs> it hasn't been painted since Top Wear won. And I said yesterday to Harry, I said, look out for the truck going to Brisbane. I said, it'll be nice and bright. You sure to win the cup and I'll get the paint. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to be told about Harry or our staff at Coleraine. We have got a good staff, and Harry, you know, he's just learning to ride, but as I say, as time goes on, he said, I've won four Warnable Cups. Well, I said, Harry, don't go kidding, you won't get ahead of me. I said, we've got a ruling cult at home. And I said, in two years' time, I said, he'll win the cup here. He said, well, he said, will I get the ride? I said, you might. I said, if you keep going the way you are. Thanks very much. <laughs> now the man of Evans talked about Harry White. Congratulations, Harry, on a terrific ride. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank Julux very much. It's actually, you might think I'd have a lot of watches, but it's just what I need at the moment. So I thank Julux very much for that. I'd also like to congratulate the um, committee, the Warrnambool Committee, very much on um, having run 28 races, I think I heard, on this course, and it is in superb condition, and a credit to them. And um, I'd also like to thank the Secretary for uh, the three committee badges that were offered to me for uh, my wife and two friends I brought up. Thank you very much. Should be more of that. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, well, what can I say about Mr. Jim Serkey? You know, he's just a, I won't say an old marvel, he's just a, you know, you've got to respect the man like that. He's a great trainer and a, and a horse, horseman. And um, the way he turned this horse out today, he raced here on Tuesday and as you all saw, he got out in front and uh, probably nine out of 10 horses, that, that would, a hard run like that would probably, um, you know, take the edge off them. But, so you've got to hand it to Mr. Jim Serkey, he knows what he's doing with the horse. So, thank you very much. What a great combination, Jim and uh, Harry. You know, that means that the Sire Ruling has had a winner here every day and two today uh, with that win of the Warrnambool Cup. We'll be back for the big one of the carnival, the Warrnambool Grand Annual Steeplechase, right after this break. You know... And welcome back to Warrnambool. Well, the cup is out of the road. It's been run and won by Top Banner. The big one coming up in just 10 minutes' time. The grand annual steeplechase. Let's now have a look at the toad update. Well, the uh, top weight uh, here, Shane, is showing uh, $2.80 for the win and $1.10 for the place. But uh, the favourite by the look of the toad board there is the one that uh, won recently over in South Australia. Number two, Spring Fortune. And uh, that'll pay $1.20 for the win and 65 cents for the place. Wild native also in the market, as is Morse, trained by Rhoda Handyside at Ballora. Well, Phil, we're privileged to be joined by a man who has won four grand annuals. He knows this track backwards. He said he was coming through like a rover with the two big ruckmen. Uh, how are you, Butch? Yeah, real good, real good. <laughs> David, you're now in Adelaide. Would you love to be riding in the Grand Annual now? Actually, yes, I would. Yeah, I'd love to do it for a kick. <laughs>